Hey Shoe Doodlers, how are you doing? Welcome to the Shoe Render Drawing Show or whatever I'm going to call it. And uh, we got Amy, uh, Jessica and Ogre Green Stuff represent, Shoe Doodlers represent, there we <laughs> how are you doing? So um, yes, I'm still working out quite what to do on these live broadcasts at the moment. And and I think um need some kind of more interaction, I kind of, I think, I think. Um, so have you got any ideas? What do you want to know? What, you know, because I get an awful lot, I'm reading your comments and what I get an awful lot is hellos and highs and which is great. And uh, dry, quick screaming and animation says, hi, I love your videos. Thank you very much. Um, but we need a little bit more because this is not about me. It's about you really. And uh, <laughs> so, so what do you want to know? What do you want to know? I know what you do want to know. Um, and I just kind of had a thought about that. Um, and I need to get, see, I thought I had everything really organized. I've been organizing all afternoon and there's one other thing that I need to do um, from last week's video, because it wasn't live last week, you may remember. I showed you the Dylan's insane new drawing tool, <laughs> his compass. Dun, dun, dun. And um, and I said, you know, has anybody got ideas for doing a video? And lots of you did. So let me go to the comments there. And then in theory, I can, oh, hang on. If I get that to copy, you know, this is the easy way to do it. Uh, no, I need to go to there. Oh, right, okay, yeah. And I need to see, I had this all sorted and then everything went wrong. Everything goes wrong 10 minutes before I'm going to go live. And then I have to go and restart the computer. And uh, <laughs> everything goes wrong. So what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the comments because that's what it was all about, wasn't it? So in theory, I should now be able to go to internet browser. I'm using Brave Browser. Is anybody else using that? <laughs> I'm just trying it out. It sort of cuts out all the uh, the cookies. Let me come back. This is really exciting, isn't it? This this is this is live, and I will come and have a look at your comments in a moment. So I'm trying to get. I'm what I'm trying to get is right. Oh, copy, and then we go to that, and then if I go to that, and then see what I get. It's no, that doesn't want to work. So if I go to there and I go to comments. So, and now if I come to Completely mad. I'm going totally mad. <laughs> Pressing all the wrong buttons. <laughs> I'm calling this a browser. It's not. It's a compass. So last week um, I showed you uh, this insane new drawing tool. Somebody actually co complimented me on a really great clickbait title. So <laughs> that was something good. Um, and I said to you, come up with ideas for what you could do with a compass. Um, so let's go through some of these. Let's try this.
Need to, right, you should have the sound back. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, am I, really? Uh, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. And the, there's just one other thing I'm trying to find, which I can't... Uh, what have we got there? Yes. Yes, there we are. So you can see me. Picture in picture. Down, down, down. We need Ted, yes. <laughs> so, um, so here we have. Um, I think it'd be cool to recreate a classic. What is that funny? Little... Oh, right. I got... There's a million windows open on my screen. That is the problem. Uh, I think it'd be cool to recreate a classic well-known painting with layers and layers of partial circles, giving it a wave or rippled look. The great wave off Kanagawa seems like it would be a cool painting to recreate with that technique. Didn't realise the compass could be so nice. I always had flimsy ones that would wobble or barely hold my pencil. Ha ha. Yeah, that's school compasses. They're rubbish, aren't they? So how, how we ever managed to do anything accurately at school, I'm never sure. <laughs> so, Wendy Norman says, a bright spring garden with all flowers based on circular shapes, all super saturated colours. Thanks, good idea. Gisela, uh, oh, that isn't so hard to come up with, the idea. The most beautiful thing to draw with lots of circles that gives you a good time of mind practice and something nice to colour is the flower of life. I hope you try it. Well, I didn't know what that was, so I had to go and look it up, but now I know. Um, Irene Potter, the obvious is mandala. So a flower of life is kind of a mandala thing, isn't it? Which is all patterns. Uh, but what about a spiral or one of those solitaire games where you have all the little balls to go in the round holes or I've seen houses built a cob oh, and put colored bottles. Oh yeah, in the end to obscure pretty light. And then you can only see the round bottoms of all the bottles. Even frog spawn is round or wheels on a train journey or big lorry. I could go on, she says. Was it she? I forgot. Irene, yes. For hours suggesting little things, lol. <laughs> Nanny Bang says, bubbles, 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 fish blow, bubbles, 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, Hunter Green says, I think you should draw the Doppler effect. That's very interesting. <laughs> it's the... I had to really think about that if that was a possibility. Uh, Cammy Fish says, geometry is fascinating. The concept behind space and time. I love all that stuff. I've got something. Oh, I've lost it already, probably. I put it somewhere. I uh, I got a, a, a little picture uh, to stick up. Oh, wait, see, I stuck it up here. That's it. Oh, space and time. I love space and time. Einstein, all that. Lot. I got myself this little picture. It's actually a sticker of the Solway Conference. <laughs> How nerdy is that? Um, and you've got Einstein in there. And, oh, you've got the whole lot. Um, I need glasses for this. I can't read it. So you've got Einstein, Picard, uh, Schrodinger, Heisenberg. Uh, and they're all there trying to work it all out. Trying to work out all that space and time stuff. Uh, I love it. I love it. So where are we now? Uh, use the compass to draw a circular circle caterpillar. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, that's Don Hatcher. Nancy Hermati. Hi there, Nancy. Says, so many great ideas. I'd draw a set of eyes where each eye has a different scene reflected, which represents what we see is not always what we think we see. Thanks for the video. <laughs> that's a great idea. I was, I was watching a, a thing last night and they had a big picture of David Bowie on it and I'd completely forgotten he's got that one big people and it, it, I had to look it up. He got he got in a fight about a girl when he was about 16 and got punched or something and boom, and his eyelid, a pupil just got stuck wide open. So people think that he's got different coloured eyes, but he doesn't. So um, what have we got? Um, Carl Olsen TV, consider the intriguing layers of the interior of the earth and other planets, drawing planetary interiors, revealing the geology beneath planetary worlds. That would be a fun use of drawing circles with the compass. It would. That's a great idea. And rerun rescue. Book for children. The mighty circles battled it out against the super squares. Who will be victorious? Circle. I could be a balloon or a coin. Square. Oh, yeah. Well, I could be a box or a table. And of course, 
a circle fits exactly in a box so a box could contain the circle but then again a circle can perfectly contain a box mm. so which one catches which um nicola Quirk says, oh, love it. My idea would be anything from the garden. Flowers, worms, trees, cats, compost bin, pond, etc. You could do a plan view or an elevated view. Great idea. Mr. Noisy, could you please draw a classic American car? <laughs> How many times have you asked me that? Swinking says, use the compass to draw circle fractals using Markov chains. Now, this sounds very nerdy. This would give weird and wonderful patterns. I'm going to have to really look that up, I think. Uh, Trails TM says, I feel the best circle to be demonstrated would be an atom because it is, it's in everything and everywhere, even in us. <sighs> Cammy Fish says, Trails, open, you're, you're open-minded and that's a good trait to have. An atom can be subject to change as a sphere, circle, cylinder, pretty much anything that represents an oval shaped form. Trail says, Cammy Fish, thanks. I have some deep thinkers on here, don't I? So, uh, Sonia F says, Mandela drawings use lots of circles. They do. I've lost it. Where? Yeah. Um, lots of circles, a fidget spinner, balloons, BB-8 from Star Wars, great balls, planets, bicycles, wheels on a tank, and other vehicles, a snail, a cookie biscuit, take cake, pizza, and a teddy bear. So many ideas. Mel C, that's not from the Spice Girls, uh, says a video on what you can turn a circle into. Just draw a bunch of circles and turn them into things, i.e. a bowling ball, football clock, bubble pot. That's actually a good idea. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, because, yeah. Um, showing how, yeah, and showing how so many things are kind of built up from circles. Um... Uh, NDL says, I would like to see hand lettering words and phrases inside circles. That would be nice. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, Elena Mir says, in Russian, this is called the goat leg. I'm okay. Now I'm stumped there. Donny Hodges says, how about some clouds? Could this be done? I don't see why not. Um, but could, it'll all be arcs rather than circles, wouldn't it? Probably. Uh, Marcos, if, oh yes, it's, uh, if you go and look up, um, search across my channel, clouds, dun, dun, dun. how to doodle Japanese clouds, how to draw clouds, you see I've done a video on that, um, and you could, yeah, you could use the curves to do the shading and stuff, I'll think about that, uh, that's got me thinking, um, <laughs> Uh, Marcus Real, circle suggestion for the video, drawing different animals based on the same circles for head, chest, shoulders, nips, and buttocks, etc. You don't want to enter the contest though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Richard Keller, when? It's not a contest. You can't have contests on YouTube. It's just, it's a giveaway to the thing I like the best or the one, yeah, you know what I mean. It's not a contest. Um, it's a call for ideas. <laughs> Richard Keller, when I was in school, the old style compass was a requirement, but so was a cigar box to keep your supplies in. Round point scissors was just a suggestion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think, I, did I? I think I probably did have a cigar box. Yeah. I think and when people smoke cigars and, and, and we used to get the little tins, little geometry set tins as well. Uh, Michael Bragg, says draw the world's most spectacular roller coaster with lots of loop de loops that would be great yeah uh sexy cave troll mm. says i love drawing space scopes <laughs> sorry that's my sexy cave troll but i love drawing space scopes clearly lots of circles in them i like making planets sorry no there we are. i like making plan <laughs> planets behind planets with massive shadows i know what you mean i actually end up drawing the stars by hand well not drawing I fill the black blue spaces in, but leave tiny holes of white so I can have a sky full of stars. It's time consuming, but it ends up looking awesome. Uh, use a ton of marker pens uh, in my art. I've taught myself to do circles by hand pretty well, but this would save a lot of time. I might look into one. I think, yeah, I've done another video about circle. Uh, I've done, yeah, let me have a look. Circles. Years ago, I did. Ah, oh. let me have a look. Circle. Yes, I did one, how to draw a perfect circle, um, which is all about just 
just draw hundreds of circles. You remember how you learned to write? Maybe you don't. You do A, 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 B, 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 and you draw hundreds of them until you learn the shape. If you do hundreds and hundreds of circles, it's practice that you get to be good at drawing circles. Um, Jessica Taylor, my idea would be a house made of different flavoured donuts with hungry, hung, hungry ants crawling all over it, not hungry ants. It's, it's, it's changed it for you, hasn't it? That's spell check. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think what, yeah, ants from Hungary. What would, are they different? I, I can't think. Hungary is all about chili pepper, isn't it? Yeah. Jessica, there we are. Uh, Arthur Cock, Arthur Cock, uh, Arthur, Arth, Art, Arth Cock, Art, Arth Cock. The Dylan Compass could illustrate the interior of a watch, <gasps> showing how the gears advance to keep accurate time. The many circular gears with overlapping layout in a cutaway will be a challenge to present in relative positioning. Nevertheless, Doing this freehand without computer aid would be enhanced with such a tool. It certainly would. <laughs> I think it would. I'll go mad doing that. Hi, Microsoft Windows has a built-in screensaver using multicolored bubbles floating across the screen. A lot of circles there are and colourful too. Thanks for your videos. Me, mine. There we are. Melissa. Uh, we're getting near the bottom. Melissa. A lot of people. A lot of ideas. Melissa Aldosari. That's a very cool and versatile invention. Love it. My idea is a bubble machine hard at work in a field and contestants wearing protective armour must throw their compasses high into the air trying to burst the most bubbles in order to win the golden compass. Ding, ding, ding. Is that referring back to, there used to be the, the TV show called The Golden Shot with pew, um, crossbows, wasn't it? That's right. Uh, Chris Miners, I think you should illustrate Penny or Benny blowing a cloud of bubbles to pacify the baby. That's a lovely idea. Uh, Margie Lee says, I think they would be great for creating my own big eyed creatures. There we are. I think that means we have to click and go and see Mar <laughs> Margie Lee's obviously got a page full of them somewhere. Eduardo Coraccio. Eduardo Coraccio. Is that right? An idea for drawing circles. You could create a series of portholes from a ship, each with its own interesting underwater scenario. One might feature a squid, another could include a sunken treasure chest. The illustration would be a long rectangle, I expect. But then again, it could be the, the side of a ship and you're looking at, where am I looking at here? Is that, that's the one. Uh, it could be the side of a ship and you're looking in the portholes at what the people are doing inside. So that'd be fun. Um, Bounding squirrel. Those compasses would be great for mandala art if that kind of drawing or video floats your boat. Dylan's invented something really interesting there in any event. And Matt Marsh says, my suggestion would be trains. There are a lot of circles and cylinders there. There certainly are. And um, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. I'm going to read some of your comments because I have decided who I'm going to follow. Let's have a look. What have you been saying? <laughs> It goes silent when you cut away to the browser screen. I think I sorted that. Uh, so draw a bike. So I, okay, I'll draw a bike. Yeah, that's an idea. Um, no sound, no sound. I thought I'd gone deaf. Brian from North Carolina here. Hey, how are you? Bad habits. <laughs> I'll agree. Should we go silent? Yes, I've done that. No sound, no sound. Sound is working. There we are. No sound. Yes. <laughs> Reading these comments is a bit. Yeah, Mr. Zhu, it's definitely Friday. There we are. Uh, sound gone again. When you change camera, there's no sound. We need to relax. Hey, I recently discovered your channel. I really like the positivity you bring in your videos, but it should be even better with sound. Certainly should. I hope you've got the sound there. Some people want the moon on a stick. Oh, that's quite a nice idea, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, for circles, I mean, uh, maybe that's not what you meant. Uh, oh, how I adore your video, <laughs> Strong Mummy Fitness says. Shoe, illustrating from Iowa, USA. Hi there, uh, Strong Mummy Fitness and Abby B. I want to draw like you. You have to practice. <laughs> Just keep keep drawing, keep drawing. And you don't want to draw more like me. In fact, you want to draw like yourself. This is my, this is my little moment of seriousness. Um, Draw like me for a while, and learn from me, and learn from other people too, and it'll all come together with the things that you're interested in. You draw the things you're interested in and whatever, and eventually it becomes 
your style, your thing. And then people will start saying to you, I'd really like to draw like you. you know? <laughs> so, so that's um, that's the thing. Draw like you. Learn from others. Uh, that's my sermon of the day. Galaxy Captain. Hello, Shu. You are the champion. Thank you. This is my new job title. I've given myself the job title. Champion of drawing. Um, to promote drawing. That's the basic idea. Um, and to try and get people interested and excited in drawing and not think of drawing as... I want people to get away from the idea of it being art. I think once you put a big capital A and art on the... Uh, I think people get a little bit kind of... Uh, whereas drawing is just drawing. It's something you look and you draw and you... Or you look inside your head and draw what comes out. Uh, and drawing is mostly a skill that can be learned. And then on top of that, that's, you put your art on top of the drawing. But it's a skill to start with. So, um, that's Captain Mara, Tri Mara, Trin Mara Trindade? Trin Trin Brazil. Hi from Brazil. Mm I feel I need to go Spanish. Mara Trindade. Is that right? I don't know. Uh, Ogri. Message retracted. Dang, dang, dang. Um, John Mine, any tips on drawing depth? Yes. Uh, Connor Belson has sound. Hello, sir. Sending love from India. Hello, Rohan, Ro Rohan, Rohan, Rohan Kumar. How are you? So, um, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you who I have chosen. So I'll go back to <laughs> here where I hope we still have sound. Yes, we do still have that. So I'm going to come back to here and you can see all sorts of things going on there. Um, and that's not the one I want at all, is it? I want the one with all the... Yes, this is the, yeah, this is the one I want. I want the one with the... Um, I am going to choose because I was looking through these things. And I know various people said um, about mandalas and things and that is a kind of very obvious thing. So I want to do something quite geometric I, I might do some of these other things as I go along so I thought of doing something geometric but I came uh, I, I saw Gisela here say oh that's not hard the most beautiful thing to draw lots of circles gives you a good time in mind practice something nice to color is the flower of life so I thought what is the flower of life and so I had to go to my brave browser which is all over here <laughs> and this is the so this is when you Google it, this is what comes up. These are the images and you know, all sorts of things come up like that. So it's basically overlapping circles. So you go to Wikipedia and are we getting that in Wikipedia? Oh, everything seems to go a bit more slow. No, we haven't. Oh, hang on a minute. So uh, we want to go to Brave Browser. That's what we want, don't we? Yeah. So when you go to um, Google and you put in flower of life this this is what comes up um, and it's this overlapping circle pattern and so when you look at Wikipedia it sort of shows you all yeah Wikipedia goes into all the detail uh, triangular grids etc etc and so we can go through these can't we and, and it, it's it's they've been doing it for years haven't they so this has come Herod's Palace that's first century BCE. I mean, that's what, 11, 11 no, 2,100 years old. So um, so they've been playing at this um, for a little while, haven't they? And so this shows you all these various places where the flower of life, pat but I think the flower of life word is actually kind of fairly recent and sort of comes up with sort of Zen and stuff like that and sort of modern um, things uh, this <laughs> the emblem is with the Lega Nord which is a an Italian political party I think it looks a little bit like a, a marijuana plant but <laughs> that's not going to so this shows you here how you kind of do it so um I'm going to do a video based on this and um, the other thing I came across was um so I kind of looked was looking at I thought what well, yeah what are people selling and and I, I really quite like this if, if it's going to go to it. Uh, can I go to the... It doesn't want to go. Anyway, so this is... Um, it doesn't want to go to the... So, oh, there we are. We have to do that. Go to... So uh, this is somebody's Etsy shop here. 
and uh, their laser. Oh, yes, I accept. So anyway, here we go. I'm not supposed to accept. I'm a brave person. <laughs> so, so anyway, they are cutting these out. I can zoom in, look, um, out of oak. They're, they're drinks mats. And But there's something really nice about it. Because of the way it's cut out like that, suddenly you see it not as circles, but as lots and lots of these little spaces so what i thought would be quite interesting would be to draw something like this and then paint in these little sections with um gum drawing gum and then paint over the top do a painting over the top so the painting and then erase those bits <laughs> so that eventually the painting has all those little holes in it does that make sense so that's what i'm going to try and do and so um if we, oh, I don't know where we can go back to. Uh, somewhere, so we need to go back to uh, Google Chrome. Uh, so then we should then come back to here. S yes, so there we are. So, uh, Gisela, you're the winner. No, you're not a winner because it's not a competition. Uh, but I'm going to... <laughs> Gisela, I like... Um, I like your idea so much. I'm, I can't see myself. There we are. I like your idea so much that I am giving this away to you. And I might even throw in a rotary pen uh, to fit in at the same time. So there we are. That is that sorted. That's exhausting. And it's <laughs> spent half an hour talking rubbish. <laughs> what have we got? Um, uh, have we got anything else? Uh, uh, uh. So Ka Ka Carolyn, hi there, says, hi Sue, how about drawing famous women in March? Weltfrautag, Welt Weltfrautag, World Women Day, March the 8th. Where I, um, March the 8th, March the 8th, oh, I'll have a think about that, I'll have a think about that. <sighs> yes, uh, Connor B. Nelson, every artist needs drawing, but not every drawing needs an artist. Do, 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 do. I've, I've, I've just discovered I've got some, I've got a little window here called sound effects. So, so I can do a triangle. And so what I really need is to put a whole lot of other sound effects in here. Like do, 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 do. Kind of, because none of these are quite right. So what was that? Uh, every artist needs a drawing, but not every drawing needs an artist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, try this one. <laughs> Not every drawing needs an artist. Oh, that's quite fun. Um, okay, every artist needs a drawing. No, that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> Not every drawing needs an artist. <laughs> um, what we can do is say, Connor B. Nelson, that is a really great thing that you just said there there we are so that those are all my sound effects what i really need is to get, get some new sound effects and i think i certainly need a do, 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 kind of what was that um you know future world kind of thing mm, let's see how that goes um <laughs> this is stupid um these are drawing but uh bb so, uh how to find shapes in objects yes well i tried to do that in, in, in most of my drawing videos and i tried to start off by saying look there's this shape here and we're going to start with a circle and a square and then we'll work out from that um karen owens hi champion you're funny i'd love to watch you georgie usa thank you i agree how to shade colors what color to add to make a shaded side of a red sphere for example mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I tell you what, um, I, you remember I got this little set of watercolours, which I said I was going to use, um, and they were all falling out all over the place. Um, I did a little video just to explain how I stick them in and get them soft. So if you got that little set, if you didn't, there's a link down below. Um, if you did get that little set, this is how to kind of prepare your set. Let me take the paintbrush out. Now you can see that I've used this a couple of times. I've got it a little bit messy, uh, but look, 
Oh, they're not staying in there very well. So what do we do? We use blue tack. So this is ooh, white tack. I didn't know <laughs> there was such a thing. Mrs. Rayner is a stationary freak. And um, so I'm not quite sure what she's got hidden away. So what I'm going to do is take a tiny little piece. This is usually works best when you've kind of warmed it up a little bit in your fingers, actually. So stretch it a bit and, and warm it up. And then I'm going to just mm, squeeze that in there. And then I'm going to work my way through all the other colours. Um, so now these are all nicely placed in there. And they're not going to fall out. Now, these are pretty hard. When watercolour half pans, these are called half pans, you can get them twice the size as a full pan. When they are dry, you have to work quite hard to get the colour. And so what we really want to do is to moisten them. <laughs> these pans really should be moistened. So what I do is I can squeeze a little blob of water uh, with my brush onto each of these colours and then I will close it up and leave it for a while and then oh, let me not let me clean the brush before I put a blob of water onto the white as well I think we'll have a bit more in there and then I'm going to close that up because that closes nice and smoothly now so being the impatient person I am I'm coming back about <laughs> half an hour later and you can see that water has kind of soaked in a bit and you can just see that that is more sort of soft on the top you can see it's kind of squidgy so you're just going to need to be able to pick up little bits of it to uh, create color and it just makes it so much easier than having to sort of dig around to get the color and, and I'm just going to add a little bit more moisture onto that one and onto the viridian and that one because they're just still looking a little bit and then maybe onto the white as well, which I just added a bit of blue to, which is never a good idea. I think maybe, maybe the lemon. Well, there you go. Um, so how do we get the colour? How do we do that? And just checking microphones are working, <laughs> all that kind of thing. So, well, let's draw a little circle. This is for Ogri. Um, and I don't want to draw too big a circle, so I'm going to draw a circle there, and I'll draw a circle there, and I might just zoom in a bit. Hang on, ooh, 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 like that. Um, and I'm going to get my little set, and no, that's the wrong one. That's my old set. Oh no, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, this is the new set. And um, I'm going to get myself some tissue paper. So, this is uh, a Pentel Aquash brush. And so, I always have to explain this the water is in the handle. Okay, and I love these for sketching and just for doing things quickly because you don't have to go and find brushes and jam jars and stuff like that of water. Um, the water just keeps flowing down and when you want to clean the brush you just do that. So um, how do we do this with colour? So if we had say a red, um, let's do that about there. So let's paint this red. Um, I'm going to start about there and sort of come around there. So we're going to want to, this is where the, the highlight is going to be. And if we go all the way around while it is wet, we can get some more intense red and kind of drop that in around there. And it's kind of, this is kind of a wet on wet thing where you just sort of keep working it. And um, so this is all one hue. So the color is a hue. And so we're just working with different tense <laughs> so so with watercolor you're getting a lighter tint by adding more water um, but in theory uh, and then yeah so a hue is is a paler shade of that isn't it and 
so we say shade but then if you want to shade then in theory you're adding black to it um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, this is alizarin crimson um, and I'm going to add some extra kind of a darker red in there to you know to, to, to add shading with colour um, and in theory if I go and mix a bit here now I've got the alizarin it's alizarin red um, and I'm going to get it I'll get a bit of um, what's it blue? I've forgotten what it's called. Uh, intense blue. And if you mix that with the alizarin red, you're going to get a purple. So that you could then also add some purple in there, um, like that. And then you're probably going to want some shade in there. So I'm going to get some ultramarine and burnt sienna and mix them together amy's going oh i do that all the time uh, <laughs> and uh, so i i normally use a color called neutral tint for my grays um and I, now here I'm, I'm kind of pulling it out so i really for wet on wet i really should have kind of done white wet in there first and then drop the colour in below. So that's your uh, that's your shadow. And you're not going to get on a sphere. You're not going to get um, this darkness sort of coming right to the edge because the you can see here that the ground is white, and so there's light reflecting up. So you've got a bright light coming down here. This is where the light is uh, shining immediately off the ball. This is where your maximum shadow is, but and you've got shadow underneath and I can probably put a little bit more in there just to make that a bit more intense um, it's not the best paper um, and but you've also got light reflecting up underneath so the edges aren't going to be dark they're going to be um, illuminated with ambient light so the other way that you could do it is a more kind of ooh, more graphic -y kind of way um, then uh, it's just to kind of paint that red like that and then I'm going to <laughs> look for my <coughs> look for my hair dryer so it's going to be a bit noisy <laughs> if you've got a studio you need a hair dryer <laughs> it speeds things up you can't really do this out in the if you're in a cafe or something, I suppose, I don't know, do you get battery powered hair dryers? That's a whole new thing to, hmm. Um, so, again, so uh, as a kind of a, a more graphic -y kind of way, then that, um, I'll just clean that up there. Again, we'll go to get this kind of gray. So I'm gonna get some ultramarine and some burnt sienna and mix them. And you gotta kind of keep playing with the mix and then um, you know you could then add a layer on the top oh, I don't know where that battery just came from so this is a more sort of graphic -y kind of way of doing it I suppose and then you can you know put some shadow in underneath as well so by adding the grey then you're adding a tint um, so yeah <laughs> that's exactly it so you kind of got uh, that's uh, brush isn't terribly clean so we got red here and at, at this end by adding more water it gets paler and paler and paler into a hue and then if we put gray in at this end then it gets darker and dark that will eventually go darker and darker into black um, which is a, a shade so you have a a, a pure coloured hue, add, add black, you get a, a shade, add white, which is essentially with watercolour, you're adding more water because the white is coming from the paper, uh, then you're getting a hue. No, hue, shade, tint. <laughs> Does that explain it at all? Does that help? Does that help? So what else have we got? 
Um, Sufi three. Is that Sufi three or is that a sort of a, yeah? Hello. Yeah. Uh, do you have a signature set that comes with Naples yellow? No. You see, this is something I've this I've sort of thought about signature sets, but it kind of gets complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Matt Marshall, <laughs> laugh is contagious, I swear. Amy says, lol, it's true. <laughs> I agree, hues and tints. Hmm, something to practice. Many thanks, yes. Um, so, um, let me go back. Actually, no, I have an advert for you. I am going to be back. Oh, hang on, let me find out where are we. I'm going to be back in 22 something seconds. If you enjoy my videos and want to improve your drawing, watercolour and illustration skills, or just want to support me so I can keep making YouTube streams and videos, then come and join us on my Patreon page. We have a secret shooby doodling Facebook group to share work and ideas, and I post longer and more detailed tutorials. Click the link in the video or in the description box below to find out more. Down, down. Dun. So let's have a look at this secret mandala thingy me jiggy me. Um, the flower of life. There should be a song. The flower of life. So um, I'm going to start here with a circle like that. And then it's all about diameter. So I'm going to go right to the diameter and draw another one. And then we have two intersecting points. So from there, you're all thinking, I really need a compass. I want to do that. I, you're just itching to do this now, aren't you? So <laughs> draw another one like that. So we have three and then we can do we've got an intersecting section there. And that goes like that. You can see how it's all building up. And when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, that's going to be complicated. I've got to go and mark it all out. But you don't because it's just about the intersecting points, uh, which is so clever. So there's another intersecting point, and there's another intersecting point. Um, and so we can just keep going round. So that's kind of starting with one circle. That's a full uh, sort of section around it. And then you can start all the way around and do it again um, at all these intersecting points and do another complete uh, circuit and it's all rather fun and because I'm am I on the screen yeah there we are this <laughs> it's so easy to forget and uh, just sort of keep going round and round so what I'm oh I've done that one and so what I'm thinking is then that um, all these little uh, why do I keep hmm. Where are we now? That, done that one. That, oh, and that you've got to keep your mind on this. As as Gisela said, oh, I slipped there. You see, as Gisela said, you know, it's it's a mindfulness kind of thing. You've got to keep your mind active on this one. So, um, so what I'm thinking then is is kind of these areas um, where yeah. Let me find. Um, get a color so I'm thinking all these areas like this then I will very very carefully paint with drawing gum which acts as a resist and then um, uh, and then I'm going to so then when that is dry then I will do kind of a painting over the whole thing maybe just something abstract beautiful colors or something like that and then you can erase the uh, it, 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 when you rub the, the drawing gum afterwards, then then it all kind of rubs away and leaves the paper behind it. But I'm also thinking maybe the thing is to draw this out like that, and then um, and then do it with a new piece of paper on the top with a light um, with a light pad underneath it, so that we don't have any of the, the the drawing lines in there. So it's all just pure watercolor. So so that is my plan. Um, and it's going to be a bit of an experiment and see how it goes. I will make a video and you can you can have a look and see what you think. So um, where are we? Um, uh, Nick has do, signature set comes in Naples yellow. Yeah. And and I, and I have to say, you know, that 
I'm being very good. I'm trying to I'm trying to do stuff with this set because this is how you buy it. Um, and previously I've said go straight out, you know, get rid of the white, put in Naples yellow. But I think you know, it's just so much easier just to get this set and start, isn't it? Um, and later I can tell you to do that. Uh, but I, I find it's really difficult because I I've been using. Naples yellow almost every day of my life for I don't know how long and, and to not have it there is like Ooh, and not to have neutral tint there either and having to mix it with uh, with ultramarine and, and brown and things is, is kind of new and different uh what do we have what do we have emails um if you want to get even more complicated I suggest adding the complementary color to make a darker tone for this case you would add green to the red to make it a deeper red color yeah, I, I, I've i never really gone into all that myself. I, I, I did at art college. I remember um, my my art tutors at one time, they all sort of came marching in and said, come, try, come to our office. <laughs> they sat me down and um, they said, there's something weird about you and, 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 the, and your colour. Uh, the way you the way you paint, <laughs> so we want you to do a colour blindness test. <laughs> so, so I had to go through this book, you know, and with all these little coloured dots. They say, "What can you see there?" I go, "Well, oh, I can see a duck." Hmm. What can you see there? I can see a a, a, a glass or so, whatever. So we got to the end. They said, "Well, you're not colour blind. What, what, what's the matter with you?" <laughs> and I think it's because I'd never really done any colour theory. And so I remember I went and got the oh, what's his name's book? Um, Itten Itten is it? I think he was kind of a, a Bauhaus kind of guy who was heavily into colour theory, and and it's just so technical. Um, and and I did all those beautiful. Have I? I um, mm -hmm, let me have a look. Uh, I want to if I go to. Um, dum, dum. That's what I want there. If we go to that, and um, we want to be on Google Chrome, yes. So we'll go to that. If I go to put um, color, uh, if I what was the circle, it was in that, wasn't it? Circle, it was there already. Yeah. So uh, I've done a video about that, um, about how to draw the color circle uh, there we are view on youtube dun, dun, dun. so i'm i'm showing you you're watching youtube and i'm showing you videos on youtube this is weird isn't it? the incredible it's iphone weird. 11 oh, you don't want to see the app now double take no. um it would lend in for anyway there we are circles color circles camera set up at motivation for wednesday advice this is kind of a long time ago when i was doing the wednesday drawing show and let's come back to there so what else do we have amy so i'll, I'll look into that amy um and Ogri says i need a color wheel for that I, I think you need to look into it it's quite fun um i remember we particularly used um poster paints to do color wheels um and it was kind of all gouache and we used rose cyan blue isn't it and there was a particular kind of yellow we used to use which were kind of the process colors that really work and, and, and blend and mix properly um, so you can get that kind of sort of set of the three colors which, which does the whole thing um tim allen thank you very much for all that uh, all that you do so you are a class act helping artists worldwide well thank you very much thank you happy people thanks for drawing and doing everything well, thank you too. And have I got something else? Have I got? I think no. I think I've shown you everything. So, um, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, Amy L C M Y K. Yes. So it's, it's, it's cyan, magenta, yellow, and and K is 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 the key color. So those are the printing colors. But when you actually go to buy them, so you, you 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 can generally get a cyan blue and a magenta but there was this color called something permanent rose was it no it wasn't permanent rose. there was one really really good color which worked because ma magenta i think if you just buy a magenta it doesn't always work because it kind of there's a chemical reaction when you paint uh and a particular kind of yellow um i'll i'll, I'll look that up and think i'll have a think about that and maybe it says it in that um in in that video I just showed you, it probably has it in there. K, K is black, 
and it's called Key because C M Y K is 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 a printing thing. So you've got the so when you print, uh, you 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 scan a photograph or a piece of artwork and you you break it down into the 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 C, the cyan, <laughs> blue, the magenta, pink, and the yellow, and then you print those, and then you put the key over the top, which is the black plate. Um, which, which ties the whole thing together. So it's called CMYK, and the K is black, but it's called Key, and that's where it comes from, from printing. Um, Matt Marshall, well, I fix printers, so K is black for me. There we are. Uh, Ravenlot Studios, what's up? Right, <laughs> no, what's up? Do you remember when we used to do that? What's up? Yeah, and and then people would go, what's up? Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? When was that, the 90s? <laughs> things move on don't they things move on and in fact it's nearly nearly five o'clock and unless somebody comes up with something was there something else i was going to say or show i can't remember was there something else was there something else um i think that's probably it for today uh amy else the emphasis is that you want to use blue pink and yellow not red yes exactly yeah so it gets very confusing because with light, then it's blue, green, and red. And so you think you think yellow, red, and you think it's yeah, yeah. You think it's just yellow, red, and blue, but it's not. It's it, it's it's cyan is a very particular kind of blue. It's a turquoisey blue. Um, I'll do a video about it in time. Um, so yeah, that was the nineties. What's that? Yeah. So uh, you cannot mix a pink in watercolor. I've, well, you can do a sort of pink. <laughs> I've, I've got to do a book on flamingos. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. But flamingos are kind of sort of, they're more of an apricot. Ap I say apricot, you say apricot probably. So uh, that'll, that'll be interesting. Trying to come up with a pink in, you cannot do a pink, mix a pink in watercolour, but you can probably get a pink, yeah. Rose, I think, is probably the term with watercolour, isn't it? Uh, Cisco Poncho 67. How's Sarah Silverwood? She is doing fine. Go and look her up on Instagram. Um, uh, so on Instagram, she's Sarah Silver Taylorwood, I think. Uh, so Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Silverwood. Yeah, I think she is on Instagram. She's doing lots of stuff. And um, I'm just checking Instagram. Uh, if I can find it, uh, 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 Sarah Taylor Silverwood. Yeah, all one word on Instagram. So you can find out what she's up to. Um, she's doing all sorts of things. She's very interesting. She's got a, a traveling exhibition going around at the moment. <clears throat> Amy, oh, oh, I mean, for, yeah, Amy says from red. Yes, you need to kind of work from a rose kind of color rather than a, yeah. Uh, Irene Potter, please do a video on it. I shall, Amy. Uh, it says, look, can't make magenta from red. I get, no, it's it's a different thing, isn't it? So, Adam Gill, what sort of sketch pads do you use when traveling? Well, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I really like the, I get my sketch pads from Sea White of Brighton. Um, and I just love them. So, you know, they kind of look like other ones, uh, but they're cheaper. And they're these, I just, I, I don't know. I just really like these ones. Um, see why to Brighton, they give you really good value. Um, you know, compared to other more pricey brands. This, <laughs> this is another one. Look, I have my name on the front. Do, 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 do. And this this is one. This is fairly recent of theirs, and this is a uh, a watercolor sketchbook. So this is watercolor paper in it, um, and I think it's one forty by one forty. So this is a new size that they started doing, and I like this because it's square and it's perfect for Instagram. So it's like the Instagram sketchbook. Um, there we are. Amy Amy likes Sea White Bright, and they have a nice water. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, uh, Cisco Ponchi, uh, love the interview. I have had fabulous, yeah, go and have a look. Um, uh, go, go and, uh, uh, do, 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 let me have a look. Let's go to, ding, ding, ding. can I do that? And then we can come to, no, 
Where? No. Oh, I can't. No, it's too complicated. It's down here, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. So if I do Sarah, we can see. Yeah, look, four media. No, that's one's with, <laughs> one's with Sarah McIntyre. who's a wonderful illustrator. So these are, uh, I did three videos here with Sarah uh, Taylor, who's a little older now. And, um, uh, and we uh, I spent the day in Birmingham sort of just drawing stuff and talking about art and stuff like that. She's a deep thinker about art. And uh, so go and have a look at those. They, that was a lovely day. And, uh, and I, I keep thinking I want to, um, I keep thinking that I need to kind of go and sort of meet meet other, other author, uh, authors, other artists and illustrators and kind of, you know, maybe do things like that. I'm, I'm thinking, is it possible to maybe with a laptop kind of go to somebody else's studio and do a kind of a live thing from somebody else's studio and chat and stuff like that? I'm just coming to terms with all this technology at the moment. That's the thing. So where are we now? Um, Amy, I was also like, Hannemühle, Han that looks German, doesn't it? Hannemühle sketchbooks. I don't know those, I'll have a look. Uh, Jessica Day, do you mostly draw from reference pictures or imagination? Um, I In my sketchbooks, I have quite a lot where I'm sort of in the evenings in TV and I just draw what I see. And TV, you only ever get three seconds and you just got to draw what you remember. I draw a lot from imagination. I illustrate from imagination. Um, and I draw from life quite a lot, <clears throat> but I will draw from reference, but not, not copying a photograph. So if, if I'm asked to draw, uh, you know, a turtle or something like that, you know, draw the Eiffel Tower, then I will go to Google and I will get a whole spread of pictures up and I'll look at it from every single angle and I'll work out what's going on so that I understand what is going on. And then I put that away and then I draw from what I've learned and I'll make sketches along the way. And then the final drawing I will do from what I have learned from what I've seen, uh, because otherwise it becomes, it becomes a copy of a photograph. Um, and um, I think if, if you want a photograph, have a photograph. <laughs> there's, there's a reason for drawing, and I don't know. I, it, it's 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 really difficult. I could because you know I, I want to say don't copy photographs, uh, but I did that myself, and I know when I was starting, there's a real joy to it because you, because it just looks great, because <laughs> it looks like a photograph, um, and and it and it stays there and it doesn't move. Um, but I think it. Uh, I think I. I think of that as like trainer wheels, and eventually one day you've got to kind of let go. Uh, you don't have to, because maybe that's what you want to do, which is absolutely fine. But I think if you want to be an illustrator, um, and and just and only want to draw from your imagination, you have to break free, and be able to. <laughs> By drawing all those photographs, you, you, you get to understand how things are built up from blocks, from circles and squares and things like that, so that you can put all that away, get a blank sheet of paper and go, I can see the picture in my head of what I want and draw it. So um, I don't say it's bad drawing for photographs, but if you can, if you can get, work out what it is you want to draw from a bunch of photographs and really understand what it is you're trying to draw and then put it away and draw what you have understood. Does that make sense? Hmm. Right. Um, uh, uh, Matt Marshall, I really enjoyed the Chris Mould interview. Yeah, he's great, isn't he? Absolutely. That's another, another interviews I did. <laughs> we can probably come. Um, dun, dun, dun. So if I go Chris. Mm, I'm going to go C eight oh C eight R I S. So you can see here I did oh let's try and mold. <laughs> yeah, so I did oh look I did oh, quite a few there, didn't we? So Chris Mold is um he's kind of very oh what would you call it? Gothic. Very gothic illustrator, and I went to his uh, his studio oh two, three years from 2014. That's amazing. And 
I sort of interviewed him and talked about stuff and uh, that was great yeah uh, I haven't seen Chris for a while so we, we usually bump into each other in sort of book festivals and things like that um uh, so okay, if you and Mark Kistler, the American, uh, if uh, my mind would be blown, I don't know Mark Kistler. That you know, that I could, I'll have to look that up. You know, being, I, I think we, you know, you get to know, you get to know people in your country really, and some people don't kind of come across. I, I don't. Let me look it up. I'm going to have to look it up now. Maybe I do. I'm just terrible with names. So if I go. And type Mark Kistler in there. So, I mean, see, something I could do is... Uh, no, I don't know Mark Kistler at all. So if I... Um, uh, 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 I need to press that, don't I? Um, no, I don't know. So... Let me get images. That's what we need, isn't it? So... Um, no, I don't know Mark Kistler at all. And... I... I I would actually say he has a very American style. <laughs> and not in a bad way. I'm just saying it's a very American style. And some, sometimes my style doesn't generally kind of translate across the Atlantic in books and things like that. And, and a lot of American artists, they just don't translate over to here for some reason. Um, and in fact, there are once or twice I've been given a book which has been translated from American. <laughs> you think it's the same language, but no. So there's a, a book was done sort of quite well in America, and so so it all has to be kind of rewritten for the spelling, but also for sort of little little meanings and things like that. And then they asked me to redo the illustrations because the illustrations are so American; they just don't kind of translate to a British edition. It's funny, and and the same thing will happen with a, a, a British book will happen you know get an american illustrator to re-illustrate it it's the thing that happens um so where are we now um so team up i mean ha ha i mean that's another thing that i could do actually is kind of um have uh try and try and try and get hold of some some youtube illustrators and we can then do a, a skype a skype uh interview kind of thing like that so you can have them on at the same time so that's something i'm kind of thinking about i just gotta <sighs> get to terms with all this technology uh bruce blitz was one of my favorites growing up no you see i don't know bruce blitz either because <laughs> the style i quite so it's dr seuss you see where i was looking at that i would say dr seuss was quite different and dr seuss does translate isn't it funny yeah culture it's a weird weird thing and on that note i think and you're all coming up with new names now so uh <laughs> so um on that note i think we have been going over an hour and i'm going to say thank you very much for watching and uh, it's been a bit weird hasn't it i got you i'm going to work this thing out in time um but thank you for being here and keep watching and i have got my outro thing here so i'm going to press that i'm going to say cheerio <laughs> well thanks for watching and if you enjoyed that then please do make sure you are subscribed to the shoe rainer drawing channel and while you're about it click the little bell next to the subscribe button and you will be notified when the next live drawing video will be in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.